Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to light a Bunsen burner, how to properly adjust it, and also how to manipulate glass tubing. This is a Bunsen burner. It's used for heating things up in the laboratory. The source of gas comes in right here. It travels along this tube where it's stopped by a piece called the needle valve. These gaskets prevent gas from actually entering the burner until you loosen the gas control knob. The gas control knob is shut when you turn it righty tighty and it won't go anymore. You don't have to go to turn it off because then you'll have to go to turn it back on again. Nobody really wants that. So righty tighty is off. Lefty loosey lets more in. When you turn the gas control knob on, the gas comes through that tiny little hole right in the center here. That tiny little hole is called the spud or orifice and it directs the gas upwards. In order to burn cleanly, the air has to mix with the gas before it burns. So the air has to enter through here, the air intake. The barrel adjusts how much air is let in. Lefty Lucy lets more air in, but this can cause the whooshing flame of death. Barrel all the way down, barrel all the way down lets no air in. This is Oz the Great and Terrible. Before you light a burner, there's a few safety checks that you have to make. Safety check number one, tug on the ends of the hose to make sure it's secure. Just a light tug, tug, tug. Second, make sure that the gas control knob is off. Righty tighty. Okay, it won't go any further, that's good. Third safety check, make sure there's an air hole. A little one is all you need with these methane burners. Now that the safety checks have been completed, turn the gas on from the source. The gas is now coming through this hose and is being stopped by the needle valve. Now, light a match. Then turn this gas control knob a full half turn. Don't be shy, you have to let enough gas go through to sustain a flame. And the match can get placed into the receptacle, not in the sink. You notice how this flame isn't really giving off much light? This is called the non-luminous flame because it's not really generating any flame. A flame is basically incompletely burned fuel that's glowing because it's so hot. Well, because it's not glowing, we know that there isn't any incompletely burned fuel. There's a proper proportion of oxygen to fuel. What happens if I add more oxygen? This is called the whooshing flame of death. There's more oxygen than the fuel really needs to burn. However, we're going to use the whooshing flame of death for a few things. Notice this lighter color inner cone right there, the tip of the light blue cone. That's the hottest part of the flame. We're going to make use of that today. If we turn the barrel until the air hole is completely gone, we get a luminous flame. This is because since there is no air in here to, to mix with the gas, the gas has to burn with the air out here, which it does incompletely. The incompletely burned gas glows in the heat of the flame, causing this visible or luminous flame. A luminous flame is good for doing things like annealing. I'll show you that process. I know it has nothing to do with getting on your knees on the floor or anything. For most things, we want a nice luminous flame. To make the flame higher, just simply lefty loosey on the gas control knob. To make the flame lower, righty tighty on the gas control knob. To turn the burner off, you turn it off from the source, not at the burner. This way, you turn it off at the source, all this gas will burn out. First, you turn it off here, the gas will stay trapped in here and won't burn off. And now to deal with the glass tubing. If you want to make glass tubing to run through a rubber stopper and into something else, the first thing you need to do is measure out the length of the piece of glass tubing that you need. One file's length is generally all you need. Then place the file perpendicular to the glass tubing at a 90 degree angle, because that's what perpendicular means. And then push down and across once, deep scratch. Now we have a scratch on our glass tube. That's all you need to break it. The scratch is facing the camera. My thumbs are directly behind the scratch together to put the most force directly into the scratch. Push into the scratch. 
If it doesn't break right away, that's because your scratch isn't deep enough. So go back into your scratch and just make it a little deeper. Don't saw. Again, all the force directed into the scratch from the other side of the glass tube. And it just falls apart. It's amazing. Now this end of the glass tube is extremely rough, so we're gonna need to fire polish it if we're gonna be able to put this through a rubber stopper. To fire polish it, we're gonna heat it. Now as we heat it, you're gonna see yellow flame. That yellow comes from sodium that's in the glass, and that's how we know the flame is getting hot enough to do the job. Tug, tug, righty tighty, air hole, we're ready to go. Now I want a decent sized flame and I want a whooshing flame of death. I'm gonna heat the tip and just the tip in the tip of the light blue flame until it glows. Rotating the glass tube to maintain even heating. Now we have a rounded edge. To prevent it from cracking, we're gonna cool it off slowly in the cooler flame. This is called annealing. It allows the molecules a chance to slide back into a more relaxed position so that the glass doesn't crack when it cools. Then place the glass tube down on a piece of wire gauze to cool. While waiting for it to cool, place a wing tip, also known as a flame spreader, on top of the Bunsen burner. You can't tell when the glass tube is cool unless you put the back of your hand over a top. Why the back of your hand? Well, the front of your hand is kind of curved and it's not terribly sensitive to heat. The back of your hand is actually more sensitive to heat. Put the back of your hand over the piece of glass tubing, not on it, just over it. If you still feel heat, it's too hot to touch. Mine is cooled down. It's now time to continue. When you put your glass tubing in, you have to be really careful. You notice how this flame is hollow in the middle? You want to heat it on either envelope of light blue flame. If you heat it in the middle, it won't heat at all. Roll the glass tubing in your fingers to evenly heat it. Then look for the yellow glow. It's kind of like yellow snow, except completely different. Once you get a yellow glow, you want to find the sweet spot, the spot where the glow is along the entire length of the tube. It will bend wherever it's glowing. If it only glows on the ends, you'll get a double bend. That's the most common mistake people make. When the glass gets all woogy, you can actually see it wooging around, pull the two ends towards you gently until you've got a 90 degree bend and then immediately turn off the air and anneal it in the cooler flame. By bending it, you're putting stress on the long chain molecules that make up glass. This will allow those molecules to slide back into a more relaxed position. And lay it down to cool. This piece of glass is okay. It's not a great bend. I've got kind of a double bend in it. It's bent a little here and a little here. Uh, it's not the best bend I've ever done, uh, but it's not too bad. It is 90 degrees, and it would definitely get the job done, transporting gases from one place to another. And that is how to light a Bunsen burner, how to play with a Bunsen burner, and how to manipulate glass tubing.